Many scientists and atheists believe science proves there is no God. Those who believe in God's existence say he created the universe and life itself. This battle between two worldviews has raged in the fields of our classrooms across the country between creationists and Darwinians for decades. Now, with the re-election of U.S. President George W. Bush and what is believed by many to be a new mandate for moral reform, the battle over creationism and evolution is once again resurfacing on both sides. As we see in this report, the only difference in the battle between today and years past is that some scientists, and the foremost atheist in the world, now believe science is providing evidence for the very existence of God. In Grantsburg, Wisconsin, the local school board is in the middle of a debate. On the one side is evolution, and on the other, intelligent design or creation. It's a battle that is waging in an increasing number of states across the country. In suburban Atlanta, Rogers got 2,600 other parents to sign petitions demanding change in the science textbooks of Cobb County. After heated discussion on all sides, the school board settled on a sticker warning students that the books teach evolution, which the sticker called theory and not fact, and urging readers to approach evolution with an open mind. As a judge heard testimony in a lawsuit brought by parents who want the stickers removed from Cobb County's science books. It is an argument with two points of view that are widely divergent. Professor Anthony Flew of England and Reading University is the world's foremost academic atheist over the last 50 years, and the author of more than 30 books. His first debate with former atheist-turned-Christian, C.S. Lewis in 1950 in Oxford, England, was the first time he advanced his argument for atheism. He later wrote a paper titled Theology and Falsification. The paper became the most widely reprinted philosophical publication of the last half-century and a key foundation for atheists and agnostics who advanced materialist evolutionism. Flew's main theses were that the universe is eternal, it has always existed and always will, that life is a random process, the result or accidental product of chemical interactions. And third, the existence of God is a self-contradiction, and evil is not compatible with the existence of God. That is to say, we start and stop with the universe itself with the everyday world of common sense and common experience, and with those hidden mechanisms of that world uh, which are progressively revealed by the advance of science. But now it is the advancement of science itself that has changed the mind of flu and some scientists. At a recent summit at New York University, flu changed his position and now believes in God as the creator of the universe. It is all, in my view, a matter of the enormous uh, complexity by which the results are achieved, which look to me like uh, the work of intelligence. Who discussed the points with Professor Gerald Schroeder, who was with the Wiseman Institute of Jerusalem and MIT, and Professor John Haldane of the University of St. Andrews. Flew turns to various discoveries of science to prove his point. From the fossil records showing the sudden appearance of a fully developed life to the emergence of visual consciousness across the animal kingdom to the basic need for reproduction. But it is the manifestation of life written in DNA and the transcription of DNA to RNA and RNA into protein and the subsequent process of protein folding that makes the best case for flu. Uh, what, what I think that the DNA material has done has shown by its almost unbelievable complexity of the arrangements which uh, lead to produce uh, this being, uh, that uh, intelligence must have been involved in uh, getting these extraordinarily diverse elements of, um, uh, to work together. As for the battle between evolution versus creation in the classrooms, it seems it may never end. But it may be explained best by requoting flu. Which looked to me like the work of intelligence. 